Remember, they're 14 and one. They've only lost a total of eight sets all season long, including a sweep over Stanford. They lost three sets in their single loss to USD, and they lost two sets last week in their only five set match to Cal. Mm -hmm. So they have been running the table against a lot of teams in the country. And Samantha Bricio has been running the table with her jump serve, and I think pretty smart to set the tone, getting her back on the line to serve to open this second set. Well, she's just so competitive and aggressive with this serve, and it's very difficult to slow her down. And we've seen that Oregon State just steps out of the way when she serves. You have to at least put your body in front of the ball, and we'll see if they're able to do that now. Had a couple of aces in that opening set, only with a couple of kills. You win 25 to 11. There aren't going to be ne many no, numbers around no. to be had. That is a blowout by any measure, and Oregon State on the board first. We'll see how they start out. Middle blocker Amanda Brown, 6'1 junior out of Southern California, back to serve. And gonna have a free ball opportunity, don't even need to handle that as Shaw hits the ball into the antenna. And Oregon State leads 2-0. Sometimes that's all you need. If you can get someone out of system, push the ball back, Bricio falling back a little bit, you can get some points off of that. Off the step out, a nice play in combination. Hannah Schreer with the kill. What sort of passer is Bricio, and is she the player that will be targeted by opponents throughout the conference? I think she will because she's so offensively such a threat that she can swing in the front, she can swing in the back. You're trying to take her out of the offense by serving at her. She doesn't pass as much of a lobby ball. It's more of a straight fastball to the setter, which gets her in trouble. It goes to the net quickly, so she has to be a little careful with her arms. Laura Schout, six foot five junior, off the top of the block out of Filmouth, Oregon. When I spoke with uh, Mick Haley about Bricio, you know, you talk about the beauty of her game mm -hmm. because she has such a fluid arm swing. Really a wonderful player to watch, but he said she has worked so hard on her passing. And now when you combine Hagland with Bricio with Shaw, they're passing at about 60% perfect, which is a huge number as USC's block raises up once again. Well, and we have to remember, we talk about this so much, but it's really true. The passing is so important. That's what allows you to run the offense that you want. When you have all these different weapons, it doesn't matter if you don't have the ball control to get it done, and they've really figured that part of the game out. Tough chance for Schaub, but gets the job done once again, this time against Olgaard off the inside hand, working the edges of the block. That one really nice job by Schaub of finding that hard cross court. You see Olgaard already coming off of the net when Schaub's swinging. Take advantage of that. Olgaard has to be up and pressing over and holding. Darby Reeder, defensive specialist for Oregon State on the serve. And Shaw once again, nice one-handed slam dunk that time by Olgaard. Perfectly legal play right on top of the net. Those are the plays that I was talking about earlier with Olgaard. She's so aware and ready all the time. She's down low so that she can get up and jump. That's what you want. First look at Nassar again. Ogioni, Carlotta Ogioni, the setter from Rome, Italy, trying to get his middle blocker, number 40, in wide involved. She'll go to the sideline to give way to Becky Defoe, the libero. Oregon State out to a really good start. Mm -hmm. You look at the scoreboard, we're tied at four. Yes, much different. They look much more in control because of that ball control and the pressure they're bringing. Perfect pass by Shaw and Alexis Olgaard one-on-one -on -one after the delivery. Good setting once again off the good passing. Haley Crone working with Aleche Pizzasagola, the two setters. Mick Haley, as long as I can remember at USC, ran a 5-1 system, meaning mm -hmm. five hitters surrounding one setter. Mm -hmm. Now he's decided to go with a 6-2 system, um, not to get too far inside baseball, but obviously two setters is the big difference. Why and what's the advantage? Well, I think we saw a 6-2 when he won those national championships in 2 and 3 and you have a lot of big hitters. And what it does is bring in a big right side blocker. You always have three options in the front row. And I think it's smart with this group because they are so physical and because he has so many options, it gives you a different look every time. And this team has been able 
able to adjust to having two different setters in there, the connection is still there. It doesn't really hurt them much. So they don't give up anything with the hitters having to work with two different setters between Crone and Pizzasagola. You can. A lot of teams can, but I don't think USC has been neg negatively affected by it at all. Haglin once again. It seems like she's already in double figures with Diggs. That ball down the line. And a net violation is going to be called against number 17, Carlotta Ogioni for Oregon State. Hagland again finding a way to pop it up. It doesn't matter what she has to do. She will get that ball up high in the middle of the court. And that ball off the inside hand and down. Sarah Ullman, number five in white, six foot three sophomore out of Albany, Oregon, having some success. Pretty good set to the outside, pretty quick. It is, it was quick, and that's what was really helpful in beating Hannah Schreer and finding that low seam between the middle blocker's hand and the net has worked a couple times now for Oregon State. I'd say keep going for that spot. That is just too easy to Shaw, and that's right over the top, very predictable. I don't know why Oregon State is serving Sarah Shaw, the six foot two senior out of Austin, Texas. Just outstanding ball control. Just seems like Oregon State can't pinpoint the spot on the floor they want to go to. I think ideally they would like to serve away from those players, but you just continue to go to them because you don't have enough uh, ability to find a hole. Another A serve. You know, this is a pretty good serve. This isn't a rocket, but I think this is really poor receiving from Oregon State. How many balls do you have to hit right up the middle? I mean, three of her aces have gone exactly to the same spot. They have, and that one, Becky Defoe calling it long, and you have to be aware of where you are. Pretty good play out to the right side, but that missed by Amanda Brown. And now USC on top after Oregon State led early, led four to three. That's the early lead they had in the second set after losing the first. First, if you're just joining us, 25 to 11. Shout able to find a hole in the block in between the USC Trojans. This was big time, a pretty fast set out there, and she was even a little bit under. It didn't have a lot of options, but she swings fast enough to beat the block that time. In between Schreer and Wanabu. Shout again, gonna have another look, and this time Wanabu is stuffing that ball straight down. That time she swung a little slower, that gave the USC block time to get over, close it up. You see Hannah Schreer makes great footwork and movement out to Wanabu, and they close it down. It has to be faster so that you can beat them. Wanabu, six foot four, pretty solid as an outside oh, blocker. She, she sets up on the outside, and there's not a lot of room. That ball down the line by Ullman, registering the point and kill for Oregon State. USC leading it just 10-9. The tough job for those right and left side blockers for any team is you're the anchor for the middle. So you have to set it up correctly, get around the hitter at the right time, and then decide when you're jumping. That's a lot of work to do. Nice play once again by Olgaard and a beautiful delivery by number four, Haley Crone. Crone, one of the two setters on the floor for USC. 5'9", junior out of. Temecula. There you go. Another one of us. Temecula, if you're wondering, a city about 30 miles inland from San Diego, if yes, I got it right? Yes, yes. Close to USC, so your parents can come watch you every night. That's what I always say. <laughs> <laughs> and pick up your laundry. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Pitcher Segola missing that serve into the net point in possession. Back once again to Oregon State. Darby Reeder coming on once again to serve for the Beavers. I'm a little surprised with the way USC is allowing Oregon State to stay in this. They're just not as concise and tight as they were earlier. You have to finish better. So a Shaw stuffed off the right side, the block by Nassar and Toner. When, when Nassar is in the front row, you really have to be aware of that because, like I said earlier, she's so athletic. Even though she's not closing that up, it's still a pretty nice block up there with Toner and Toner anchoring that really well, pressing towards the middle of the court. Nassar did a really good job of not quitting on the play she because did. she took her first step in the wrong direction and really stayed with it. Out of the middle once again. If you're Oregon State, what do you do against Olgaard on the perfect pass? 
man, you just got, you've got to get up and take one side or the other. On that play, Nassar is still moving. You have to decide, am I going to take the left or the right side against Olgaard and just go for it? Coach Haley told me that Olgaard is really determined. What a top, determined dig that time by Haglin. But Olgaard really determined to play professionally and have a chance at the national team. And thus all the work she did in the offseason to get much fitter and an awful lot quicker. Well, I think there's no reason she can't. She's so athletic. She has that big presence and the smarts that she has now as a player. They weren't there as a younger player. She's really grown in her mindset and I volleyball IQ. Eric and Nassar with the kill, but uh, that's a serve. You know, again, we talked about that type rope. Oregon State hanging in against the number one team in the nation and then giving them a freebie. Becky Defoe missing that serve. And so point in possession back to number one USC and here is Olgar. <laughs> Becky Defoe stretching out but can't keep that ball in play and Emily Young number 20 in Cardinal out of Schaumburg Illinois haven't called her name very often. What would Coach Haley be saying right now? Because he can't be too happy with the fact that Oregon State is hanging with his Trojans. No, I think he would probably be saying, stop playing around and put the ball on the floor. We have plenty of options. The ball control's there. Find a way through. Brown down the line. And Oregon State starting to get a little bit of flow. And one of the things I've noticed, other than Samantha Bricio, USC is serving very, very easily. And you can't serve this easy against a team that you should walk in and get your job done. That's just the goal of this team this year. That's why they've only lost a few sets. That ball is kept alive. Ogione keeping it alive for Oregon State. Dubbed by Defoe. Out of the middle, Defoe almost there, but Schreyer with the kill for USC. Nice playing by Washington. Live coverage starts next right here on the Pac-12 Networks. Haley Crone back to serve for USC. And another block out of the middle, this by Schreer. Great footwork by Schreer. I'm so impressed by the USC middle's footwork the last couple of weeks. They're getting their feet there, then they're closing and they're pressing really well. Very easy serve. You can see that from behind and it leads to another kill for Allman as we'll get you to the current Pac-12 standings. USC the only undefeated team in the conference followed by Washington and they're coming up next. Number eight Stanford, Colorado, California and then on down the list. Uh, Colorado easy to say the biggest surprise so far in conference play. Oh definitely although I, I think a lot of the coaches in this conference said hey we were calling it early they have gotten much better and you have to have to be aware of them especially when they're playing at home. Huge advantage. And why is that? You're playing at altitude, and the ball moves so much differently. It flies, it moves from side to side. Very difficult to adjust to that kind of game. I agree with you. It's really different playing volleyball, an inflated ball yes. at that kind of altitude. But hey, Colorado will be at the University of Washington, so uh, get your tickets now. But who else in the country can challenge that group? And does USC, since we're watching them now, do they have enough on the left side to eventually go on and win a national championship. I definitely think they do, and I think two teams you have to be watching out for, Penn State and Texas. I've seen both of them this year, very impressed by the physical dominance of Penn State. I think both Penn State, Texas, and USC in terms of height and physicality, very similar. So it'll be interesting to see the way the defenses play and try and pick up after those really strong offenses that each of them boasts. Bricio with yet another service winner. Thanks for joining us once again for volleyball coming your way on the Pac-12 Networks. Number one USC at 14 and 1, 4 and 0. Oh. Their reigning Pac-12 freshman of the year, Samantha Bricio out of Mexico back to serve. Oregon State 9 and 6 overall looking for their first conference win. USC after playing three of their first match conference matches at home are out for four straight on the road against Oregon State and then against the University of Oregon on Sunday. That match also right here on the Pac-12 Networks. Must score situation for Oregon State, but not against Hagelin, the libero in the off-color jersey. And then Bricio very smoothly and calmly out of the back row. And Bricio running that almost like a slide, like she's a middle in the front row. She goes off one foot for that back row attack to make sure 
that she gets her feet to the ball. Very important to not forget as a player, feet to the ball first, then you take your swing. Perfect pass off the Bricio jump serve and a better block on the outside. Sarah Shaw, you forget it's six foot two because she's mostly a piece. She's a very good attacker yes. off the left side, good passer, good defender, but you forget she's six foot two and a pretty stout blocker on the she outside. She is such a good anchor on the left side because. 25, we've given you the top three, USC, Washington, Stanford. Arizona State comes in at 16, Oregon at 22, UCLA at 23. But Oregon State in desperate need of a point right here, but Haglin just too good digging in the left back. Little confusion there, and that's an area where Mick Haley said that Natalie Haglin has really improved and really worked on her game. Overhand setting off a ball dug in her area where she's got to come through. Beautiful delivery in rhythm to Ebony Wanabu. We have to have a libero that has good hands because they are touching a lot of balls and having to take that second ball when it's out of system and not a perfect pass. Natalie Hagelin, not only the touch, but the placement of the ball have been so good. Lucio serve handled nicely. USC, after uh, being tied early at 12 apiece, has carved out a big lead. Nice block that time by Laura Shout working against Wanabu. If you can get in front of Wanabu and press hard, sometimes she will come down with that elbow and she will hit low into the block. If you're strong there, you can get her. Shaw down the line, very good accuracy and USC will go to a handful and then some of set points. If you're just joining us at Guild Coliseum in Corvallis, USC, number one team in the country all over Oregon State in the opening set. 25-11, Oregon State did lead in the second set, 7-6. Trailed at the timeout, 15-13, and has been all USC since then. For the set, Old Guard once again, Defoe says not yet. Nassar is stuffed by Alexis Old Guard. Wanabu, six foot four freshman out of Fairview, Texas, was freshman of the week as USC swept the honors. Offensive player of the week, Alexis Olgard, defensive player of the week, Natalie Hagelin, and Wanabu, freshman of the week. Good block on the outside by number 22 in white, Shout, just to get things started for Oregon State, just the way they did in the second set as they were able to hang around for a while. Nice job by Shout of getting over with the feet and then pressing really hard back in. Combination play. Beautiful swing by Bricio. She is just kind of a, just a silent assassin. She just is so smooth. That's exactly what it is. She's very silent and she comes up and she creeps in. You can see none of those Oregon State blockers have their eyes on her. Very important to know at all times where Bricio is. That should be one of the first things you call out. Oregon State's got to get out of this rotation, but they can't yet. Samantha Bricio was serving three aces up the middle, and give her credit, cuts this one back down the line and registers yet another ace. And the trajectory of, trajectory of where she's bringing it from, so high up and then down, and the movement, side movement on the ball makes it very difficult to get a touch on. Oregon State, you can see now receiving almost with four players. You don't see that very often. Shout into the top of the tape. No touch by USC, and the Trojans go back out on top. It was a much better answer, though, by Oregon State on that pass on Bricio's serve. Treat it like a dig. You have to get your whole body under it and pop it up. That's exactly what they needed to do. You think it's the best serve in college volleyball? I guess Micah Hancock, the setter for Penn State, oh. would certainly have something to argue about. I think Micah Hancock's serve is different. She will serve from the right side to the left side and have that side spin on it more often than Bricio does. So it gives it a little bit of a different look. Both very powerful, though. That ball missed out of bounds by Wanabu from the middle. Is this, some, is this a new wrinkle for USC with Ebony Wanabu taking a couple of swings out of the middle? 
I think so. I only, I've only seen it once in the four matches that I've had of theirs. Um, and I think it brings such a different dynamic and the fact that she is able to swing that quickly. You have to be ready for wherever she is at all times. And moving Schreer to swing out on yes. the right side, hitting the swing set. Wannabe was a middle blocker in high school and just making the adjustment over to the right side now that she's moved up to USC. Hagelin now for the Trojans, leading 4-3, up two sets to none. That is a really good shot. Laura Schaut is a player for Oregon State. I know she's only got one year left, but they can build around this six foot five outside hitter. Great delivery out to Shout, and they bring it in a little bit to try and mess with that USC block, and they are able to do it. Olgar jumping in the middle and then not able to keep up on the outside with Wanabu. Service error by Lila Toner, if you're just joining us, the 6'1 freshman out of Istanbul, Turkey. And Coach Laskevich was really counting on Toner, but the international schedule goes from October to May. And then most international players take off June, July, and then come back and start training again in August. And then Toner signs with Oregon State, and she comes out to Corvallis and finds out that she's got a match in two weeks. Oh, no. So she was not in match shape when she arrived in Corvallis, adjusting from her international schedule to the... Uh, United States uh, collegiate schedule. Lesson learned, she'll be in shape oh, next yes, year. Oh, yes, she will. Won't do that one again. Reader on to serve once again. A little confusion there among the Trojans. Good decision there, staying down on Shaw, something that Terry Laskevich was talking about. What outside hitters can put the ball away? Big momentum swing by Allman on the outside. Not going to go down against Haglin. And Shaw is stuffed by Oregon State. Shaw will often hit low and flat. Usually she's able to find the fingertips of a block like that. But Nassar, because of her athleticism and her ability to jump up and press, she saves it with her arms. Feet not even there, but arms just get in there. Erica Nassar from... Oregon State, an underappreciated middle blocker in this conference, as you pointed out, because middle blockers, they're just waiting. Please yes. pass the ball yes. well. Get me involved offensively, and Oregon State has been struggling in that area. Well, we saw a little bit more offensively from her last year because their ball control was better, so it's something that they definitely struggle with, not being able to get that production. Really good dig in the backcourt that time by Darby Reeder, but unable to follow up are the Beavers, so USC back on top, 7-6. Oregon State's got to get right back at it. I was looking at the Pac-12 conference schedule. They play UCLA tomorrow, mm -hmm. where USC has a day off, as does Oregon. Nassau. Oregon playing UCLA tonight, and Erica Nassar with yet another kill. There's no night off in this conference. We've been saying that every match I've done this year, but this year it's really true. There are so many good teams, and teams like Colorado and Utah just working their way up, and scaring people. Washington State is no easy out either. No, everybody they are talks not. About, right. Everybody talks about what a difficult trip it is to go over to Pullman and made even more difficult by the fact that Washington State is better. Colorado is definitely better. Utah, I like them last mm -hmm. year. They weren't winning too many matches early, but they finished strong. So there is a lot of depth in this conference, let alone the six teams in the conference that are currently ranked in the top 25. Another service error for Oregon State, just missing too many. Now, Coach Haley thought that his Trojans were serving pretty well, and he mentioned Alexis Olgard serving below the knees. Let's take a look at this. This one pretty deep, working on Toner. And into the deep cross court corner, Emily Young registering another kill. Young is tough because she's a lefty, so Oregon State has to line up differently on her. You have to realize that you have to move inside. They did a pretty good job of staying in, but then they don't close up that seam and get hip to hip on her. Good pass by Olgard in transition. And again, Oregon State playing some good defense. Oh, 
And Bricio high off the middle blocker, Amanda Brown's inside hand. The coverage in the defense for both teams in that rally, very good. You have to, when you're blocking, to, or when you're hitting, to stay around your hitter to be able to get those touches and keep the rallies going. And Bricio, a player that's able to execute and finish so well. Bricio again. Stanford, what did it tell you about USC at this stage of the conference season? It seemed like Stanford was playing young. They weren't finishing well, and they looked a little uncomfortable, and they weren't able to dig themselves out quickly. They obviously did some great things on their offense. They are a good team with a lot of options and a lot of weapons, but what USC does in terms of controlling the game from start to finish, they don't make a lot of errors, and they keep their errors very minimal, only a couple, and then they find their way back out. And I think that USC is a team that can continue to build on that. Stanford just has to find their identity a little more with the errors. Bricio coming out of the timeout after a little talking to McHaley, found the antenna for that unforced hitting error. A violation called against Oregon State and USC now leading 12-9. If you're just joining us, USC at 14 and 1, 4 and 0 in conference, won the opening set 25-11 and won the second set 25-15. Very nice play. Carlotta Ogioni tipping that ball to the floor, number 17 in white. We've seen her do that once already. You have to be aware that she is an offensive setter. She will go up. Bricio does go up, but the problem is she goes straight up with her arms. There's no penetration over the net. You can't go up. You have to go over. Darby Reeder with a sprawling save out of the backcourt to make that point possible. Same combination play. Nothing that deceptive about it. No. Bricio just hanging out in the middle of the court and Oregon State's not reading. That's a lack of focus, of knowing where your big hitters are. Again, they're so focused on Haley Crone's setting, they're not seeing out of the corner of their eye that Bricio is coming up to take a big old swing. Bricio again, real concern for Oregon State when she's at the service line and yet another ace. Obviously, Terry Laskevich was concerned. He said she had scored nine or 10 points just from her serving in the first couple of sets. But I don't think Oregon State's done a very good job. Th this is a really good serve, mm -hmm. but it's not traveling at 100K. Oregon State should be able to at least get a second contact out of this. Down the line, Crone not able to make the play, Bricio unable to follow. That was much better, and that time Oregon State realized she swings on her serve straight from where she's hitting. There's, It's not going to corners, it's not going all over the place. You just have to line up in front of her shoulder and get the ball up. And receive with four. Exactly. You just cannot allow no. yourself to be aced. I know it's a good serve, but get a high swing off the left side, get anything mm -hmm. other than the aced. Wanabu set is tight and tips that ball just over the top of the block and down. Smart move by Wanabu, not trying to take a swing and not forcing it. Just take a little off, get the tip, keep it in play. The goal is to always make the other team make the error, force them to do it. For a freshman, she has been so good with limiting her errors. I'll give you the numbers just against Cal and Stanford, but you look on the season. And you don't see many freshmen that make the kind of decision she does as Erica Nassar, once again, number 40 in white, showing up very well for Oregon State. Nassar, so smart with the visual in front of her. She sees what's happening, that one-handed touch, so good. She's smiling a lot tonight, too. I think she's having fun. From Minifee, California. Started every match last year, averaged a couple of kills. Had a concussion or concussion-like symptoms earlier in the season when they lost in five sets to Washington State, finished the match, and was just cleared to play the following week down at the Arizona. So uh, it's not always a non-contact sport. Exactly. Sometimes you can take one right to the head. And a lot. We've seen a lot of players in the past. They'll hit their head on the floor trying to dig and run around. And this is not an easy sport. Perfect free ball pass execution again by Alexis Olgard. Mentioned Ebony Wanabu, the six foot four freshman out of Texas against Stanford. 34 of 28 
three errors. Against Cal, five set match, 21 of 37, four errors. For the weekend, she hits 331, 34 of 65. That 34 of 65 is really good, is. but seven errors against Stanford and Cal, to me, that's saying that's a freshman that really knows how to play. That too, and you, you mentioned earlier she was a middle before. Those are middle numbers. Those are low errors, and middles are used to not being high error because they don't get set as much, and she's even taking that with, I'm getting set a ton, and I'm still keeping the ball in play and putting it down. And most of the sets she hit, high sets on the right mm -hmm. side, in transition and in serve receive. Shaw off the top of the block, dug in the backcourt nicely that time. Rachel Bueller on now for Oregon State. Out of the middle to Nassar, tipping and gets the ball down against Haglund. What a good choice by Erica Nassar. One of my favorite plays to see out of the middle, high and right up over the back to the side. Put so much pressure on your libero to come flying up. I would even le like to see Shaw in the front take that, turn around and try and pop that up so that Haglund's not running up. USC is passing the ball exceptionally well, and Coach Haley told me earlier this week when I spoke to him that that's one of the areas, especially with the improvement of Samantha Bricio, who doesn't pass, didn't ordinarily pass when she played for Mexico. She was out of the rotation, but has really worked on her ball control, and combined with Haglin and Sarah Shaw, who's back to serve now, they're almost at 60% perfect pass, which is a really good number. That's the kind of number that wins you a national championship. And another tip in front of Haglin. You have to be aware that a player like Erica Nassar is smart. You have to know that she may not hit. You have to be on your toes. All of those different things, awareness of what's happening. Natalie Haglin doesn't necessarily need to be running up. Again, I think Shaw can take that. Bricio over the top, dug by Defoe. Bricio again, and you hear the hand contact. When we talk about ball control in volleyball, you usually think about passing mm -hmm. and digging, but hitting control is really important, and she gets a good hand on the ball. She pinpoints where she wants to go, and you can tell that she takes her time, decides where she wants to go with the ball while she's in the air, because she will change last minute based on what she sees. Perfect set to the outside.